in the last video, I wrote some code very quickly and didn't explain it in very much depth. But the purpose of this, as I, as I may have mentioned, but that I would love to emphasize, we're going for conceptual understanding. Our task today is not to memorize a lot of new syntax or get wrapped up in whether or not you've ever seen this word dot format. This is a method in Python. Uh, these things, please feel free to post in the comments if you want more details on these things and I'll, I'll reply in the comments. But really the, the goal here that I can support by writing a few, I'll write a few notes right in here. The goal is to understand the ideas. So, so this is going to, this, this line creates the loop in the first place. It causes a loop to happen. So it's going to loop five times. Uh, these next two lines create some variables. We then print them out, we ask for some input. And as you might have found, it will, it will create an error if they type in letters or if they type in uh, anything that can't be used with this method. And I'm going to leave it as a challenge for you to figure out how to get around that error. So we've created our first loop, the first part of our program. But now what we haven't done yet is stored the information in the database. So at this point, I want to go ahead and get into the beginning of the conceptual meat of databases. Databases. Databases are a place to store data. What do you mean a place? Is that like a hard drive, a, a, a piece of a hard drive, a USB stick, uh, a, a, a server inside a server farm? Well, it could be all of these things. Typically in web hosted software, a database consists of two parts. So let's say databases typically have two parts. They have actual location in memory, and they also have a small piece of software, small piece of software to manage the data. Hmm, what do I mean by this? Isn't, isn't it sufficient to store our files in memory and just have names of our files? Why, why do we need a small piece of software to manage them? And the reason is that our code needs to be able to access this data in, um, shall we say, a, a high-level way. So programmers are always using this phrase, high-level or abstraction. What do these things mean? This means I, as the programmer, I don't want to have to keep track of the exact place on the exact hard drive where the exact piece of data is being stored. So let's go ahead and think of a specific example from this application. So once the user types in a guess, we now have a piece of data. So I'm going to go ahead and put a comment. This is the piece of data of interest. I'll just say this is the data of interest. And by this, I mean the variable called guess. Now let's put that in there. So guess is the, is the data of interest. That is the thing that we're going to be focusing on. And then we're also going to be checking whether it's correct or not. All right, so tr truth be told, there are a few pieces of data we're interested in, but let's just pretend we're mostly interested in guess. Let's pretend that on the first pass of our program, we just want to store a history of what the user has guessed, along with, let's say, the problem that they worked on. And we'll come back in later, and we'll do, we'll do the calculations to find out if they were right. For now, we're just going to store the problem that they worked on and their guess. It would be very tedious if we had to know where it is on the hard drive. We would prefer to have a small piece of software handling that for us. And the way I'd like to encourage you to think about this second piece, and by the way, even though I haven't written much here, this is how all databases work in the modern world. So you can take this knowledge, um, you can take this knowledge and go do a job interview uh, in, <laughs> in a few months from now. Really, I'm trying to give you full strength software engineering knowledge. So I'm going to talk about this in this video and then write a little bit more code. So this small piece of software, it's often called, all right, often called a daemon process. So the word process is, we often say a software process. Or so you can also just call this a daemon. For short, you can say it's a daemon. And our code, so let's say inside a web app, a where I'll say a web hosted application, our code, our Python code, in our case, we're writing it in Python, our Python code will talk to the daemon. Hmm, what do I mean by talk to? It will pass data back and forth. Pass data, it will, uh, let's, I'll just write talk to for now. 
it will talk to the daemon. Information or data will be passed info will be passed back and forth between let's say from from the from the Python program to the, the daemon process. And these are pretty big ideas. So if these are new to you, don't worry at all. These will become clear. So information will be passed back and forth from the Python program to the daemon process. The daemon process is in charge of managing, of managing the data in the database. We're about to see that in detail. So I'll give you a, a second. You can pause the video if you want to take notes on what I've just written down here. Give you a second. Okay, now we're gonna get back, we're gonna get back to work here. So we have to decide exactly what data we want to store. And in order to do that, I'm gonna start by giving it names. So in this right now, I'm gonna give names to these variables, and then I'm gonna let you figure out how to put the data inside them. So I've decided that I'm gonna need a couple variables. I'm gonna make them right here. The first one is going to be called the problem and it needs to get some sort of value. The next one is going to be the user guess, but we've already got that happening down below. And now um, I'm going to say was correct. Nope. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll just make these all this, was correct. And for extra points, you could say time spent. Time spent. If you really want it to be good, you could put in you could put in multiple. So we could put in all of these pieces of data, right? I mean, this five pieces of data that does not sound like that doesn't really sound like too many, but that is definitely a lot for a multiplication app. So I've just decided these will be our types of data. So think about how you might do these. And this one down here, by the way, is pretty. Um, that's tricky to do. It's beyond the scope of our video now. But I think these you ought to be able to figure out. So pause the video. How could you make what could you put on the right-hand sides of these equal signs in order to figure out how to represent the problem, let's say, as a string, how to represent the answer, and let's have that as an integer, how to store their guess, which we have, and was correct. If you want, you can move these. We can move all these down uh, below this other code. So pause the video and figure out how to do those and which ones you might have to move. All right, good luck.